Hey there, if you're new here, new to me, new to the scene, my name is Mushy and welcome to Hoka Life. Hoka Life is a simulation game that just came out of early access and I literally cannot stop playing it. I had to talk about it. For this video, I'm gonna do a quick overview of what the game is about. Then we'll get into all the fun details like the furniture building, which is super cool. And then we'll give you my thoughts and feelings, reviews, and all those things in between. Um, spoiler alert, I love this game, but um, maybe there's some things I don't like, so you have to watch the whole video to find out. <laughs> Let's get into it. You first jump into Character Creator, which I thought there was honestly a good variety of hairstyles to choose from, and I'm a big fan of color sliders. Oh my goodness, chef's kiss. I think overall, it's not over the top, but I'm always greedy and want more. I'm fine with it, it's cute, I made me, and I'm happy. So then you pass out on a train, end up in this random sleepy town, are greeted by animals that you can now apparently talk to, and they offer you a bed to sleep in for the night. We love a good kidnapping. The next morning, you are greeted by Oma, who encourages you to explore the town and meet the other villagers. And I'ma just say this, Oleander can eat dirt, all right? They forced me into go find their scarf. They weren't even nice about it. I wish there was an option to throw their scarf away instead. We're enemies. This is my villain origin story right here with this red scarf and Oleander. After you're acquainted with your enemy, it's time to choose your home. You can pick this rundown house or this rundown house. Either one, it's for you. <laughs> Oma will set you up with a donation box where you can kind of deposit all of your resources to get it restored. And then Bestie Moss will get you an ax to actually like clear out the debris. And then you get a brand new home, how cute. Then we get into the actual flow of the game where you'll learn new features by completing quests for different villagers. So first thing I got requested to do was to create a flower planter in a fence, which helped introduce me to Sally who runs the workshop. So you have to go out, collect all the resources that you need and then go back and craft those items. And then Moss will have you actually go and place those items somewhere in town. And this just kind of ends up being the flow of the game where you'll be introduced to new NPCs who will introduce new features to the game. Like Rosa, who will help you move new villagers into the town itself. Or Loris, who opens up a fashionable clothing store. There are other locations to visit in the game, but I really don't wanna to spoil too much about it. But you get the idea, there's plenty of villagers to meet plenty of villagers to hate, and plenty of things to do. But Mushy, what is there to do? So when I first wake up, I water my crops, whatever I have, and then I'll go check the bulletin board. I'll see if there's any requests that I can complete, and then I'll spend some time around town either collecting bugs or fish, kind of just gathering things to sell, or if I need to like gather resources or anything like that. Then I head to town, I check out the furniture first to see if there's anything new that I like, and then I do the same thing in the clothing shop as well. After that, it kind of just depends on whatever my current goals are. Me personally, I've been trying to collect new furniture pieces that I think would be really cute to have in town. I've also been trying to just collect money to make sure that I can buy anything that does come into the stores. And then I like to sometimes spend time either making sure I have resources ready by planting trees or even just chopping down the trees to collect wood. Sometimes I'll head to the mines to actually collect those rocks and ores that I need for crafting as well. It just kind of depends on whatever I'm feeling like. And I'll be honest, the game really does not hold your hand whatsoever. And some people might find that a little discouraging and that's okay. You really just have to go at your own pace and do what makes you feel the most comfortable. Or you could just bully your villagers. <laughs> that's always fun for me. <laughs> One of the features that I actually really like about this game are the Mayor Merits. I think some people might see them and think of like Nook Miles, but the Mayor Merits work a little bit differently. Sometimes you'll unlock a reward, a feature, a buff. It kind of reminds me of like a skill tree. I think that the only downfall of this is that they are on these linear paths. So if you complete a challenge that's further down in a linear path, you still have to wait till the previous point is unlocked first. But because this isn't like a currency that you earn and it's more of like features you unlock, I find myself going into this menu and maybe looking for features that I want. I could see a lot of people being frustrated with this feature because it's not the most intuitive. You don't really know what each reward is even gonna be. So you don't even know which reward to even work towards. But I kind of like that about it. I like that I can just kind of discover, explore, adventure at my own pace. I don't have to really abide by any rules or any timeline. I just just kind of do what feels right and I end up getting rewarded for it. I like it. Obviously the big feature of this game is designing and creating your own furniture pieces. You can buy these different pieces from Sally which will give you different shapes that you're able to use in your builds 
and as long as you have the resources, you can craft it. You can either choose from something that's previously available to you, like the staircase or the bridge, or you can just pick from one of the available blueprints and start from scratch. Now, when you first get into the menu, it might feel a little bit finicky. I found it was most comfortable for me to play with mouse and keyboard, but a controller should work just fine. I also recommend to click into the different settings to see what can help you out. Turning on snapping is really helpful, and also the guides can help you with positioning. Especially if you're making a chair, you kind of want to know where your butt is actually going to sit down in the chair, so the guides can be helpful for this. And then from there, it's completely up to you. You can resize the object, move it around, rotate it, whatever. I ended up just making a couple of random items throughout the game. You can make a bed, a table, a fence to block off Oleander from everybody else. The possibilities are endless. Maybe you're not the most creative and that's perfectly fine. One of the cool features about Hoko Life is that you can actually share and upload your designs with other people or download theirs. There's a whole city that you can visit to check out other people's creations. I like to go check out the contest entry winners and check out their individual stores to see if there's anything cool that I can buy. It also doesn't cost any money or resources, so there are just kind of free items just hanging out here. Especially if you're waiting for new furniture to arrive in your store, this could be a nice way to curve that in between and really help you get decorating. I wish there was more in-game features to be able to find creators or even browse random shops. I love an option to just shuffle to a brand new store and just see where you end up. But for now, it's pretty cool. But at the end of the day, I am really, really enjoying this game. I'm having so much fun. And for me to be able to recommend a game to people, it has to be something that really lures me in. And this game absolutely does that. I'm honestly having a really hard time recording this voiceover because I wanna get back and play the game right now, but I gotta get this done. <laughs> it's a priority. And honestly, that speaks volumes. Once it's uploaded, I'm, been, I'm not even reading the comments. I'm gonna be playing Hoko Life, I'm busy. So if you wanna check out this game, it's $20. It's available on Steam, Xbox, PlayStation, and Nintendo Switch. I'll have links down below if you want to check out Robert's socials. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it so much. Feel free to subscribe to the channel for more cozy game content, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. 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 Subscribe.